your nutritional recommendation vary depending on the type of cancer the person has in the stage of their cancer? That's correct. Yes, it does. And and the other issue is, is that we want, if the cancer cells are suffocated sufficiently, that's the best, um, best avenue to live longer is suffocate the cancer cells as the cancer cells get, ag get more aggressive or as the cancer cells spread. So nutrition may be enough with an early stage prostate breast cancer and breast cancer garden variety, estrogen positive breast cancer, early stage breast cancer, early stage prostate cancer. But as the, the, the cells themselves change and mutate to different forms as the cancer advances, so then the, the, the nutritional recommendations become different and we start to want to suffocate the ability of the cells to replicate around the clock. And then therefore using supplements in the middle during the day and in the middle of the night. That's the, I think that's the major difference is that as the, and we find, you know, I've been getting, seeing studies and also um, based my um, treatment protocol and seeing that work more effectively when we suffocate the cancer cells replication, which chemotherapy can't do because chemotherapy is a one-time shot of poison that, that can kill the cancer cells, but maybe not kill all of them. And then having some cells um, can still grow after that. This is cont ongoing continually. So we're doing this over a period of months and years, suffocating cancer cell replications with simple compounds that are good for you that prevent cancer cells from replicating, right? And these simple compounds maybe are um, like the EGCG, the certains from green teas and the curcumin complex is derived from turmeric and so we're and so, so we're taking and like raw garlic. So we're taking some of these substances, and not just giving people to eat them in their diet, but, yeah, but to spread them out through the day. Like we're spreading out medications every five hours, and still, when you get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night between one and three in the morning, take it then as well. So the cancer cells never get a chance where they're not being where they're having the replication not not being suppressed. Yeah. So that's what I mean by the precision nutrition we've designed. We're we're making we're modifying it to the person's condition as well. With the diet, with the diet as well, and we, and and re remarkably seeing spec, you know, really surprisingly powerful outcomes. You know, can people come to the Eat to Live retreat with cancer? Can you treat them for cancer there? Or do you suggest they go somewhere else first and just come there for nutritional excellence? Well, it's not primarily a place where we're treating cancer patients, but it's primarily treat, treat with food addiction and overweight and related comorbidities. But I do have cancer patients come here so they can, because when they first are getting onto the protocol, for many of them, doing the juicing and doing the sprouts and the salads and the supplements are overwhelming for them to like do at home until they really see what to do, even though I'm not saying coming to the retreat for the month, the treatment. This is where I object to these alternative cancer centers. You go to Mexico, you stay there two weeks and they fly you home and they're giving you therapies which are dubious in any way. But so this is different. We're not expecting the person to be cured when they come to the retreat, but they could come here to learn the protocol, to see how we make the three, the, the juice with bok choy and lettuce and a mixture of beet and carrot and how we, sp how we space out the supplements. So how to make the food and make the recipes. But you don't have to come to the retreat, obviously, to get this protocol. I teach it. I have, as you know, I have people who join my um, my website and ask me questions and they ask the doctor for them. They could watch the video. They can communicate with me. They can get a book. They can read it. So I make it so people can get my advice over the internet where they don't have to come to the retreat. But some people obviously feel like, I just want to go there, spend a few months with you, and then I'll go home and replicate it when you go home. Because this is a long-term investment. It's not a quick fix treatment for cancer, right? We want a person to live this way now for the next for years of their life. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned that what we ate in childhood and even what our mothers ate when they were pregnant with us will affect our future cancer risk. So is it really ever too late for somebody to adopt dietary excellence? Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's the point. It's never too early because we don't know what our risk factors were from our childhood. So we should. So, and that's why 
you know, people criticize me and think that I'm too radical as far as my nutritional recommendations are too excellent. I don't allow people to cheat that much. I don't allow people to use salt. I don't want people to use flowers and have a diet be heavy in brown rice or white potato. I want to eat, you know, greens and onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds and right. So they say, well, why do you have to do it so perfect? And the answer is because for a lot of us, we don't know what damage has accumulated in our lives prior to our dietary changes. We haven't been excellent eaters in our childhood or since birth, most of us. And now when we switch to a diet with this degree of nutritional excellence in it, then we see the magic happened. And I always say that the money's in the last 5%. We see the same thing with people with high blood pressure and advanced heart disease. A lot of times 90% compliance isn't good enough to really see the de disease reverse itself and make the full recovery, it's particularly when people have valvular problems in their heart or calcifications in their heart. We really need to move towards a more this type of um, higher degree of excellence. And I'm also saying to you, to people that our experience over the last three decades is we could make this high degree of dietary excellence taste so good, as you know as a chef, that they're not giving up flavor and enjoyment of eating when they're eating all these healthy mushrooms and salads and vegetable dishes with a you know with a Thai curry sauce and all the you know the orange cashew sesame dressings and all the in other words they're still able to make the diet taste delicious enough they don't feel deprived at all even though it is very um, it, it, the, the diet the degree of excellence is very is elevated right.